Hey everybody, I'm Jason Jennings. Super excited to be with you today. I'm the pastor of kids here at Concord and excited to be able to join with you today and share a little word of what God has been showing me lately. You know, kids love to play this game. I don't know if you've ever been in and played this before, but it's called Follow the Leader, right? So that's a game where uh, you there's someone out in the front and everybody in the line lines up behind them and whoever is in the front gets to do a certain motion or gets to say something and everybody behind them has to, to act and follow exactly what uh, that person says. So in order to really stay in the game, you've got to pay attention to the leader. You've got to do exactly as they say. And, and actually, if you play the game correctly, any player who fails to do what the leader does is out. And then the, finally, the last person left in line that's completely followed the leader the entire time becomes the new leader. You know, and as, as, I, as I was thinking about this game, follow the leader, there's really one thing that can kind of keep you uh, from following the leader, and that would be distractions, right? And so if you take your eyes off the leader for just one second, you're going to miss what they're wanting you to do, and then you're going to be out of the game. And, and, and so, you know, I'm trying to think, man, what could be some distractions that would cause this person to not be paying attention to the leader? Well, for some, some it can just be the people in front of you in line or around you in line. And, and other things can be just things that are happening around you. So ultimately, there are a lot of distractions that can cause you to take your eyes off the leader. You know, and Concord kids, over these last few months, we've been studying about uh, how the Israelites have, have journeyed from captivity in Egypt to the promised land. And we've seen how God had raised up a leader in Moses to lead his people. And Moses followed God closely. He kept his eyes on God and did well. But at time and time again, we saw that on this journey, the Israelites faced challenges. They faced things that would, could cause them to take their eyes off of God and, and be distracted by the things that are going on. Like right out of the gate, as they're leaving Egypt, they come up, come up to the Red Sea. And we see that immediately, I mean, they face this big challenge. And God's told them he's going to take them to this promised land, and they got this huge body of water that's stopping them. And they turn around, all of a sudden, Pharaoh's army's chasing them. And they're starting to panic. They're starting to complain. They're starting to grumble. They're looking at these distractions, forgetting about the leader, but they're looking at these distractions. And God says, no, I've got this. I've got you. I'm here with you. I'm going before you. And so he parts the water, Moses through Moses, and, and they walk on there and God saves them. Well, then they get into the, to the wilderness there and they, all of a sudden they're beginning to run out of food and they're getting hungry and they start complaining and they start saying, did you bring us out here to kill us? And all of those things, they're taking their eyes off of the Lord and they're focusing on the distractions. Yet again, God comes through and gives them food. And then they need water and the same thing, complaining and grumbling, God provides water. And then they come to the promised land and they send some spies in and they see giants, more distractions. And yet they allowed that, those distractions to cause them to, to be fearful of what was in front of them. And so we see that they continually have a lack of faith and focus on following God, which leads them, causes them to kind of, leads them to sin against God and they miss out on what God has for them. And at this end of this time, Moses, his time is about to be up. He's trans, they're gonna be transitioning to raise up a new leader in Joshua to take over. And that's a huge responsibility for Joshua. But Moses says these words to Joshua that all of us need to hear and believe. We see it in Deuteronomy 31.8. He says this, it is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you and he will not leave you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Man, I just want to share something with you, kind of a journey in my life. This is a powerful, powerful word for all of us. But just recently, like this is the Wednesday that CQ would be happening right now. CQ would be happening here on this campus if, 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 if it was, we didn't have COVID and all this stuff going on. We'd be having it right now. But God had something different in mind this year, and we are walking through that. And as our team has been looking at taking CQ out into the community, there's some challenge that, challenges that we're facing. I mean, we're facing trying to find host homes, and what is that going to look like in different areas, and where do we go? And we're like, there's a lot of things that we could be distracted by our team that we could focus on that could cause us to be afraid, that could cause us to complain, that could cause us to be worried, and actually could cause us to sin. 
But the cool thing is that we've seen time and time again that God has gone before us, that God is with us, that he hasn't left us out here. He's not forsaken us, but that he is with us. And I mean, it's been an awesome journey that we're on. And we would ask you to continue to pray for us in this journey as well as we continue to move forward with that. But I wanna just kind of wrap up this whole time and applying this to all of us and how can we apply this to our lives? Listen, I don't know what kind of journey that you're on that God has you on or what he's asking you to do, but I wanna encourage you with these, with these few words. You need to follow him. You need to keep your eyes on him and not on the distractions around you. You need to do whatever it is he tells you to do because you can take this step with boldness, the step of faith with boldness because God's promises are true. So let me just encourage you here. You don't have to be afraid because he goes before you. You don't have to be dismayed because he is with you. He's never gonna leave you. He's never gonna forsake you. Just trust him, follow him. Don't look at the distractions. Go wherever he sends you and I promise you, He's gonna be with you and he's gonna do things that you are not, you're gonna be wowed by all that he does in your life. Just trust him, he is with you. Follow the leader. Let's pray. God, we love you and we're so thankful for you. Thankful for this word today, God. I know that we faced lots of just new weird things in 2020. God, and it seems like every month there's something new that we're like having to face and challenges we're having to go through and walk through. God, we just wanna trust you in this. We know your word is true, your promises are true. Help us to cling to your word, cling to your promises and cling to you and know that we don't have to be afraid, we don't have to be discouraged because you go before us, you are with us and you're never gonna leave us or forsake us. Thank you for those words, thank you for those promises and we love you, in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining with me today. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week. See you.